When I was 16, I won a great victory. I felt in that moment I would live to be 100. Now I know I shall not see 30. I pray you retire unharmed to Damascus. Reynaud of Chatillon will be punished. I swear it. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I am Jerusalem. Imagine you're nine years old and you find out you've got a disease so terrifying that people treat you like you're radioactive. Now picture that, despite this, you rise to become a legendary king. Meet Baldwin IV of Jerusalem. He ruled a kingdom like a superhero while battling the devastating effects of leprosy. Despite having an army six times smaller, he managed to outsmart one of history's greatest military leaders. How did Baldwin pull off these miracles while his body was falling apart? Stick around because this story is about guts, brains, and much drama. Baldwin IV was born in 1161 in Jerusalem to King Almarek I and Queen Agnes. From a young age, Baldwin showed signs of intelligence and courage, traits admired in a future king. Growing up during a time of constant battles with Muslim forces, Baldwin's childhood was deeply influenced by the harsh realities of war and politics. However, the real enemy was far from typical. At nine years old, Baldwin's tutor noticed something unusual. Baldwin felt no pain when his arm was pinched or bitten, even to the point of drawing blood. This alarming discovery led to the diagnosis of leprosy, a feared and stigmatized disease at the time. Despite this, Baldwin's condition didn't immediately prevent him from leading a normal life. He continued his daily activities, showing remarkable determination and resilience. His mother, Queen Agnes, and his stepmother, Queen Maria, both played significant roles in his upbringing, ensuring he received the best possible education and training. He enjoyed horseback riding and nightly games, often competing with other noble children. The kingdom, though, they were shocked. A future king with leprosy? That was like finding out your superhero has a kryptonite allergy. But even as a child, Baldwin's courage and spirit began to define his legacy, setting the stage for his extraordinary and challenging rule as the Leper King. Leprosy was one of the most feared diseases in the medieval world. It was highly stigmatized and those diagnosed were often shunned and isolated from society. People believed leprosy was a curse from God. The sight of its symptoms, such as disfigured skin and loss of sensation, terrified communities. Leprosy was the medieval equivalent of having a giant flashing sign that said, untouchable. Medieval medicine had no cure for leprosy and its causes were not well understood. Lepers were usually forced to live in special colonies away from healthy people. They had to wear special clothing and ring bells to warn others of their presence. Despite this harsh treatment, many lepers relied on their faith, often seeking comfort and care from religious institutions. Imagine being handed the keys to a kingdom while also being dealt the worst hand in the medical lottery. That's what happened to Baldwin. Not only did he have to juggle the usual kingly duties, like keeping the peace and warding off invaders, but he also had to contend with a disease that turned him into an outcast. After his father, King Amalric I, died in 1174, Baldwin IV became king of Jerusalem at the age of 13. His youth and illness meant he needed strong advisors to help him rule. The most notable of these was Raymond III of Tripoli, who served as regent during Baldwin's early years on the throne. Picture a grizzled veteran with more battle scars than Jon Snow. Raymond was a seasoned leader and provided stability and guidance during Baldwin's initial period of reign. Another key figure was Baldwin's mother, Agnes, who stayed influential at court, pulling strings, making sure her son's reign didn't go down in flames. Additionally, Baldwin relied on the support of his stepmother, Queen Maria, and her new husband, Balian of Ibelin, both of whom were loyal and capable advisors. Despite his reliance on advisors, Baldwin was far from a passive ruler. He made important decisions. He negotiated with the Byzantine Empire for military support. He also married his sister Sibylla to Guy of Lusignan to strengthen alliances. Baldwin's court was a complex network of power. With shifting loyalties and intense political maneuvering, the kid maintained control and authority despite his illness. Baldwin faced immense physical and emotional struggles due to his leprosy. As the disease progressed, it caused severe pain and physical deformities. Baldwin's hands and feet were especially affected, 
making it difficult for him to perform everyday tasks and eventually to lead troops in battle. This guy was a walking medical disaster, but he still managed to kick some serious butt. Baldwin remained determined to fulfill his duties as king. He often had to be carried on a litter during military campaigns, yet he still inspired his troops with his bravery and unwavering spirit. His determination is led by example, even in the face of such adversity, was nothing short of remarkable. Emotionally, it was a train wreck too. Knowing your disease will only get worse and having everyone think you're cursed? That's enough to make anyone throw in the towel. But Baldwin? Nah. He used his faith and sheer stubbornness to push through. He wasn't about to let some medieval superstition dictate his life. He was like, yeah, I've got leprosy, but I'm still your king and we're still gonna win this. And win they did. Despite the disease eating away at him, Baldwin ran his kingdom like a boss. He defended it against invaders and kept the whole place from falling apart. His resilience and guts made him a legend. Baldwin wasn't just good at politics, but also brilliant at fighting. He outmaneuvered his enemies like a chess grandmaster, only his board was the battlefield. This dude led numerous campaigns, keeping his kingdom safe with clever tactics and surprise attacks that left his enemies scratching their heads. He was a brilliant military leader. One of his most notable achievements was the Battle of Montsegard in 1177. Picture this, Baldwin, barely holding it together physically, goes up against Saladin, the medieval equivalent of a rock star general. With a massive army of 26,000 men, Baldwin's forces of 4,000 men were outnumbered, but that didn't stop him. Nope, he took those odds and threw them back in Saladin's face. Eventually, most of Saladin's army was killed. Baldwin's tactical brilliance led to a crushing victory that boosted the morale of the Crusader states. Baldwin had this incredible ability to inspire his troops, even when he was too sick to fight on the front lines. Just seeing him there was enough to light a fire under his soldiers. His strategic moves were legendary, fortifying key positions, negotiating crucial alliances, and turning every disadvantage into an advantage. Baldwin's understanding of military strategy and his boldness in battle earned him the respect of both his allies and enemies. Baldwin knew his days were numbered, so he had to sort out who'd take over after him. Imagine you're a king with a ticking clock on your life, and everyone around you is crowded for power. Like it's a Black Friday sale, who would you choose to succeed? Baldwin's sister Sibylla and her son Baldwin V became central figures in these succession plans. As we said before, Baldwin tried to strengthen his kingdom by marrying Sibylla off to Guy. Good idea in theory, but in practice, total disaster. Guy's leadership was about as effective as a chocolate teapot. The court quickly split into two groups. Some nobles supported Guy, while others saw him as unfit to rule. What did Guy do? He decided to massacre the people of the king's land at Durham. These weren't just any people, they were under royal protection. Realizing his mistake, Baldwin IV tried to fix things by crowning his nephew Baldwin V as co-king in 1183. This was his way of saying, sorry guy, but you're dismissed. But Baldwin's health was failing fast, so he brought in Raymond to govern again as regent. Now we've got more layers of political complexity than a lasagna. Despite his efforts to secure a stable succession, Baldwin's death in 1185 left Jerusalem in a precarious position. The young Baldwin V's reign was short-lived and the kingdom soon faced internal strife and external threats. While most people with a hangnail think their life's over, Baldwin was out there running a kingdom and taking names. Seriously, he was like Iron Man minus the suit and with a lot more bandages. He didn't let leprosy define him. Instead, he flipped the script and became one of history's most unbelievable rulers. His troops saw him as a beacon of courage. Every move he made, every battle he fought, was a testament to absolute willpower. He kept his kingdom stable even when it was like a version of Game of Thrones. Alliances? Check. Fortified positions? Check. Defense against larger forces? Double check. Baldwin was a master at turning the odds in his favor. Leading troops when your fingers are literally falling off, that's some hardcore dedication. Baldwin IV's story is a giant middle finger to the notion that your circumstances define you. Greatness isn't about the hand you're dealt, but how you play it. If Baldwin's story inspired you, like and subscribe, share your thoughts on overcoming challenges in the comments, and tell us which historical figure you'd like to learn about next. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.